I'm Sir Flobojan Thunderhammer. And I'm Teflon Frosthammer. And I'm Cabbage Tidehammer. And none of those dildos are going to be here. Hi, this is Barry Nave Vidalia. This is uh, Lord Quan Quarrel. And this is WAP. That's Women, Amp Guard, and People. If Amp Guard knighthood means anything, you can't knife a motherfucker and keep it. And the thing that people need to understand essentially about arts and sciences events is that your scores don't matter. Do you want a black phoenix or a white phoenix? Jeez, oh, language, man. We're yeah, on right. a freaking podcast, for fuck's sake. Mind-blowing experience. Today we have with us on WAP is Guardian Drukara Silverblade from the Duchy of Ironhold in the Kingdom of the Desert Winds. Say hi. Howdy. <laughs> so it's really nice I'm to have... I'm from Texas. I can't get rid of the howdy if you have it, I want to. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Perfectly respectable. Um, so we're really excited to have you on. Uh, I'm a total newbie, so I didn't know of you recently until Quan um, brought you up. So for those people like me um, who've been in this game a short amount of time, can you like give us a introduction to who you are and what you like to do? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I am a glutton for punishment. Um, <laughs> I started in 1986. Um, one of my friends, uh, was dating my sister and my parents had rules. We, we, we weren't really allowed to date on our own, uh, when we were in high school. So, uh, I think it was also part taming of the shrew where the oldest sister had to always accompany the younger sister. <laughs> right. <laughs> but whatever the situation was, the guy she was dating was best friends with the guy who was in my class in college, I mean, high school rather. And then, you know, they're like, hey, let's go to Amp Guard. We're like, well, I don't know what that is, but sure, why not? And <laughs> it was so cool. We had so much fun. And initially, we were just blanket bunnies. But eventually, um, you know, we each came back in our own time and space and mm -hmm. started taking it more seriously. So I took it more seriously around the summer of 1990. And that's when the persona of Drukara started. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my first uh, credits were in Healer. Um, I uh, I grew up in a very uh, bad side of town. You know, I literally lived on the wrong side of the tracks. Right. Um, and so I, you know, I I'd sur survived all kinds of, you know, uh, serious violence in my life and had to fight. Um, and all that stuff. So when I came to Amp Guard, I really didn't want to continue that. So I didn't mm -hmm. take the fighting seriously. Uh, literally, my first 19 years of Amp Guard, um, I was a super flurb, um, <laughs> and uh, and I, I and I mean that with all of the love and intent that it deserves, uh, because uh, flurbs make the world go around. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. I don't think that flurb is a pejorative term anymore. Like, no, I mean we have flurb of the year now. So. Yeah. Yes, I was nominated for that once. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, but I got beat out by a really good friend of mine, Regan Lechugal. He's actually got a much longer name. It goes on forever. Yeah, he, yeah. He's um, on whack. He he. We had him on our podcast. Um, mm -hmm. the male version. Yeah. Um, he's great. He's, he's a guy, he's and he's also a lefty. Yeah, and um, I think he's going to be knighted here soon. He I... technically well, is he already knighted. knighted. He's, he's having got his ceremony. actual official the give party. him a stuff thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, he he is also a plague knight. Yeah. Um. So uh, I got knighted during the plague, as did mm -hmm. my husband, a good number of our friends as well. Um, so yeah, I love that guy. Love that guy. Love you, baby. If you're listening, um, <laughs> he probably is. He sends me messages every once in a while after our episodes there. He's a good dude. Like totally a good dude. Very, very supportive and totally worthy of his belt. Good guy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. That just gets us to the 1990s. <laughs> um, so, uh, but no, I've, I, you know, I've, um, uh, uh in the 90s and up to the 2000s, you know, Amp Guard was just a hobby for me because I was in college and I did a lot of college. Um, I went to uh, undergraduate school at New Mexico State University in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to graduate school there and then I went to law school 
at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. Um, and, you know, so I, I did stuff. Um, and when I came back, I, I've been to Amp Guard back and forth a lot um, uh, because it was just an in and out thing. So I tell people, I think I'm in my third incarnation of Drukara. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just uh, when I came back, my son was starting to get to an age where he needed to be kept entertained and busy. So I came back, my sister came back, my brother came back for a little while. Um, we, I have a, like, I'm a first generation amp garter that got my family into it. So <laughs> then my, my dad came into it, my brother, my sister, we got our kids into it. Like it's a, a real, real thing. That's awesome. And uh, the gathering of crowns mm -hmm. as it's now called. Yes. I have to get used to that. Um, uh, that used to be our family reunion. So, um, oh, wow. you know, when I first started going to Amp Guard, it fell on the third week of uh, February. Mm -hmm. And um, that was my sister's birthday week. Um, so <laughs> I, had to, I had to get her in, I had to get her back into Amp Guard. So I didn't have to choose between sister <laughs> and the event every year. Um, and uh, we're only a year and a half apart. And we look a lot alike, except now because my hair is short. Mm -hmm. um and a lot of people get us confused a lot uh, when they see us so um, i understand that feeling in, in the 90s when my brother got in like my sister and i we don't look our age mm -hmm. and we still haven't looked our age in a really long time but we used to pass ourselves off as triplets um i i'm actually a triplet i don't know if you knew that so i had no clue that's so <laughs> I have no, but we passed ourselves off as triplets. We told everybody we were 19. My brother <laughs> looked older. Mm -hmm. At the time, he was 14, and I was 23, and my sister was 22. <laughs> and this was the story we were sticking to it. And we, I think, we had the whole uh, kingdom of Iron Mountains convinced that we were triplets for right. a little bit. Um, but uh, my sister and I were raised like twins mm -hmm. for a long time. My grandmother used to make our clothes and mm -hmm. stuff. And then when we used to go out, when we used to date, we used, when we'd get ready, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they'd call us on the phone. We're like, hey, buddy, I don't know if you know, it takes us a while to get ready and stuff. And so they just wouldn't listen. So we just passed the phone off and the guys had no clue which sibling they were talking to. <laughs> that's done. So we, we sound a lot alike and uh, we are a lot alike. Um, and I'm the older sibling. Um, anyways, you'd love to meet her. She's a lot of fun, too. Um, but I didn't, uh, I didn't take fighting as seriously until I married my husband, um, Warlord Shadow Silverblade, mm -hmm. now a knight of, mm -hmm. the, of three belts, nice. um, Marina's Serpent, he's working on that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he, we were eating one day and he was watching me eat, drink, and do all the things with both my hands. And he's all like, you're left-handed, aren't you? <laughs> I I am. And he says, "Why do you fight right-handed?" I said, "Well, everybody else fights right-handed. I, you know, figure fight right-handed, you know." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "No, be a lefty." <laughs> and I literally got to my fourth level order of the warrior on just simply left-handedness. Mm -hmm. Um and I, and I wouldn't say that it was just that because I've never, because of my violent upbringing, um, I'm not afraid to get in front of people mm -hmm. and I, I like to invade their personal space. Um, and uh, because I have T-Rex arms, I have to invade <laughs> their personal space first before they get to me. Yeah. How tall are you? Um, I'm five foot two. That's, I was Hi. thinking if you're short, you have to close yeah. really fast. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's absolutely how tall I am too. I'm five ten. Yeah, so, <laughs> so people, you know, people underestimate me uh, because I'm five foot two, and um, they usually just see me being a flurb. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so there's there's a lot of that. Um, but I did I did go to a sword night boot camp um, shortly after I married my husband, mm -hmm. and I brought all my flurb and glory with me. I intentionally made garb for that event. I made uh, two tunics, one blue, one pink, but they were made of Hello Kitty fabric. 
And um, I had a Hello Kitty hat, Hello Kitty socks, Hello Kitty earrings, Hello Kitty necklace. Um, <laughs> I had two swords, also Hello Kitty fabric. I had a big shield that was blue, Hello Kitty fabric. And um, I made them ill. <laughs> um, emotionally ill from looking at all that Hello Kitty. But I got really good wax out of it because people wanted to get me off the field as quickly as possible. So they <laughs> I didn't get stuck on the same end of the line and just like, oh, I wish people would fight with me. I mean, like they literally just physically had to get me off the field as quickly as possible. So um, it was great. I got some good wax in. Um, I I did pretty good, actually. Um, the, uh, my uh, instructors talked to my king and was really impressed with my uh, diligence at Sword Knight Boot Camp. I, I got a griffin, my uh, first and only griffin. That's awesome. From that event. And then shortly after that, I just started winning. And they were like, where did you come from? <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I I killed a couple of people. They were just not, because they'd, they'd seen me 19 years of, of flirtasticness. Right. And <laughs> they're like, what? And then, you know, earlier in the days, um, I, I flaunted uh my my feminine side i've always been non-binary but uh for some some people some guys don't like losing to chicks right and yep. um, i made it a, i made it a point to look very chicky um so sometimes i would fight in fairy wings mm -hmm. um i uh or, or 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 you know just up as a completely as a fairy or whatever as a whatever so um uh people who aren't used to fighting uh, female people, women, right. non-binary people, or whatever—they they just they, they female are and female adjacent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> female or coded. I don't know. Female coded. Uh, yeah. So you know they they uh, you know some of them were easily confused, but people who actually fought, who really fought, they didn't take that seriously. They they're like whatever. You got parts. Um, <laughs> you got stabby parts. Um, yeah. So, and I have curves. So, you know, those are things I can't change or do. I just have to get to be a better fighter and, uh, you know, get in there faster and better. So, um, literally going into the pandemic, um, that, that was really my bread and butter, um, was the lefty hip scoop. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just getting in there before people expected you to be there. Now I'm a grandma. And people who know that I'm a grandma, they're, they look, they're like, oh, I'm just going to walk over the grandma. And I'm like, mm, that's not how this works. <laughs> um, so um, I, I surprise people because I do have good shield defense. Mm -hmm. um, so I, and I know how to use both my hands at the same time because I used to be a righty because everybody else was a righty. Mm -hmm. Right. And um and then I I, uh, I I took classes and I watched videos um, on lefties. So I like to watch a lot of uh, Glenn Mallet of Providence because mm -hmm. he's a lefty. Um, but I like to watch a lot of videos by Delos or Delos mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and by uh, always at the tip of my tongue. Go! I'll remember him in a second, but he, he does a lot. He, he, he had an, he had a belt, but he dropped his belt. Um, and I'm trying to remember his name now and I will remember it later. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I like, I like, I like watching them because they're closer to my, my, my size mm -hmm. and their fighting style works for me. Um, so, so I have that. Fight, do you typically use sword and board or what's your favorite? Like go to. I, I am definitely a sword and border, but I really started off Florentine early. Mm -hmm. um, so I can do both. But I used to be a flag girl in high school. So I'm not too bad with a pole arm either. Nice. Um, so, and in fact, I, uh, I, I've, I've beaten my husband in a couple of tournaments on just that section. Just that one section. Because um, I, I did the little. Do, 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 do. All the twirls, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Distraction. I, I have the music in my head as I'm doing it. Da, 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 da. And then it, it had to have gone to El Paso High School to know the song. But anyway, so, 
Um, you know, old habits die hard. Mm -hmm. Um, so as long as there's a butt spike, I got the front and the back and it's all working for me. So, (laughs) um, but, um, I've, I've actually, uh, when I was younger, I'm I'm approaching 50 now. So, um, things creak now more. Um, and, um, and I have to use a lot more, uh, muscle ointment to keep things moving around like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, when we lived in dragon spine, we, we played in the burning lands because that's where my parents lived and we moved closer to be, we wanted to be closer to them. Mm-hmm. So we played there and then sometimes we'd go down to dragon spine and later on in the afternoon and fight with them. And, uh, we like to take advantage of the various tournament days. So, um, I've, I've placed in the top five in both of those kingdoms, oh, wow. um, so, and, and that's when, with them having the wheel going out there and wrecking things. Mm-hmm. So I think that's pretty good. That's amazing. Um, yeah. But are you still, <laughs> so are you still at four warriors or have you gotten more since? I'm still at four warriors. Now here's the other half of my, my life. Um, I have several autoimmune diseases. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Several meaning two. Um, and I make kidney stones on the regular. Mm-hmm. So I, haven't really been focusing on the fighting uh as of late uh when i moved to the desert winds about two and a half three years ago um they needed somebody they needed they needed more people to stand up and do leadership when i ran for office i wasn't planning on running for Mm -hmm. office in the kingdom um but they literally had posted on the board hey anybody's gonna run for you know monarch and regent of the kingdom bueller bueller yeah <laughs> and I'm like well i've i've been in office before and I, I literally just moved here so i'm like nobody's gonna know who i am i mean what okay you know so i reached out to a friend and i'm like i'm willing to run and do stuff who do you who do you got because uh, where i lived at the time and at the time that the rules were that um my park wasn't a core park so we couldn't run for monarch Mm-hmm. Um, so we had to run as a team and you still have to run, you know, you still have to run as a team, but now we get to run from down there too. Um, but, um, I asked a friend who I knew from the kingdom, you know, point me to somebody and they pointed me to somebody. And then I was in office for like two years, um, which is how I became a, a knight of the crown, mm-hmm. um, as a knight of the flame first, and then a knight of the crown. And that was all all plague plague time um a plague night yeah i and saw I, I take it yeah I, I i was confounded when i saw the dates on your orc for when you got awarded your knighthoods i was like wait both of them within a year that's yeah. insane that's awesome so you mentioned I, I, was, I wasn't trying to um and in fact i it um i ran away from every night circle meeting I, I was like um you know they're like hey come on we're gonna talk about you i'm like no i'll see you guys later <laughs> Bye. i mean i literally ran away have fun every doing that. Time, but i had my own reasons one I'm, I'm i'm i really prefer to be the person that's the squeaky wheel and a pain in the butt mm-hmm. um and then on top of that uh, I'm, I'm just basically an anti-authoritarian kind of person. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, on top of that, we lived so far away from my family and I knew they wouldn't be able to come out. And they were the only people I really cared about showing up yeah. to um, to that thing. And then, then we had a plague and then it was, okay, fine, whatever people. And, okay. <laughs> so um, sure, the first just person do called me. I was like, are you sure? Are you, you don't want to change your mind. It's okay <laughs> if you change your mind. Um, but um, a lot of people talk to me about representation and how it matters. And um, I'm, I'm a lot of all of the above. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a they, them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm non-binary, transgender. Um, I'm obviously a person of color. Mm-hmm. Um I am uh, on the autism spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's, I, 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 I want to make sure that people know that um, that there is a path for them, mm-hmm. and 
it, it, you know, for some people it takes a long time and other people it doesn't take hardly any time at all. It's just, you know, uh, most of my time was spent in Amp Guard. My first part of my life in Amp Guard was really just, I, I worked hard and I wanted to play as hard. So I just played um, mm-hmm. and had a really good time and, and leveled up in sixth level and a whole bunch of classes that I just really loved very much. Um, and then, and then here I am. So I, I, uh, I did projects. I like those projects. Mm-hmm. And now I have a really amazing Beltline who I'm mentoring and they're doing phenomenal stuff. And I'm really proud of each one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a very diverse Beltline and they, they, they all contribute um, to our kingdom or their respective kingdoms in their own very special way. And uh, they're all rock stars. I love them. So I'd, I'd like to talk more about your Beltline in just a moment, but um... yeah since since you have so many intersections that you're representing what is that like uh to be a knight and to have all of these uh different facets that you kind of embody oh um i i i so i'm a i'm an activist by nature Mm -hmm. um and i used to actually be a professional activist in my professional career Mm -hmm. um and so I don't have a problem speaking out on issues of the day as they come about. And I'm, I'm a firstborn uh, child of a Marine from Texas. So I don't know how to be quiet, even if I wanted to be. Um, but I've been working on it because I know sometimes you gotta, you gotta listen. You have to, well, all the time, you have to listen twice as much as you talk. Mm-hmm. And um, some of the time, it's not about me speaking up. It's about saving space for other people so -hmm. that they could have the opportunity to use their voice. Right. Um, So um, there are, there are people with stories. There are people with, they just want to talk to somebody. They're like, have you been here before? I, I get PMs all the time from people about various different things. I mean, I'm diabetic and I get lots of calls about those. Lots of mm-hmm. like, oh, I just got diagnosed. What do I got to do? What do I got to know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same thing with um, with being a non-binary transgender knight. Um, it's the same thing with being an, a, a knight on the spectrum, a, a person of color. Um, you know, and especially since I've been in the game, I, I definitely want to stop and correct the record when people say oh in the early days it was so great you know i'm like oh no it's it's been really hard for people of color Mm -hmm. all along the way and it's it's taken a lot of effort for people to use the words of inclusivity that we need Mm -hmm. and it's still hard in a lot of places for for people to even think in inclusive terms yeah um and um, I think that um, some of it is that you have to find some commonality amongst all these different things. Intersectionality is a very important aspect of explaining to people, hey, I know that you get what it's like to be excluded from a conversation based on, say, your gender, even. And I said, imagine what it's like if you add gender and race to that. Imagine what it's like if you add gender, race, and being neurodiverse to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it adds another layer of conversation that people aren't ready or they don't want to learn about. And you still have to make the space. You still have to say, hold up, that's not cool. So what, and, if, what advice mm-hmm. do you have uh, for kingdoms that are looking to become more inclusive? I would say that they should definitely reach out to the diversity team, the the DNI team. Um, And I would also say um, to, uh, on on the AMP Guard page, I have to update the the document I created, but I created a a diversity inclusion 101 kind of document that people can read and understand Mm -hmm. that it's going to be hard for them to understand another person's perspective because they don't have share the same lived experiences Mm -hmm. and so it's gonna it's they're gonna have to sit and listen for a minute 
they're going to have to sit and give somebody some space to talk. And they're going to have to uh, create opportunities where these people can uh, feel safe. Um, and then listen, really listen when there's some criticisms. Uh, because there's a, there's a lot of people, for instance, people of color, who come to the game once and never come back again. Mm -hmm. And it's because they showed up to the park and somebody was throwing around the N-word. Or they come up to the park and it's black versus white. Or they come to the park or, you know, whatever the situation is, um, you know, they, they just did not feel welcome. Um, at the park. And the same goes for people, especially LGBTQI people mm -hmm. um, in A. And um, <laughs> I just refer to them as the rainbow family. But, it, you know, the they you, you come to a park and you, you can tell pretty quickly if people are feeling welcomed. Um, you really need to go the extra mile to let them know that they that not only are they welcome, but they're safe. And making a place safe um, doesn't just make a place safe for them. It also makes it safe for women. Um, and, and people um, don't realize that, too. The other half of uh, making AmpGuard safe is uh, safety on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where cis women can be even more helpful because... Uh, when they speak up, uh, people will stop and go, oh, yeah, you're right. That that weapon isn't safe. Mm -hmm. uh, when they speak up, they're like, yeah, that person is throwing way too hard. And they re they respect it. You know, you have to, you know, use patriarchy in the in its opposite form <laughs> to get people to finally make changes, you know, because you shouldn't be leaving bruises on people. Mm -hmm. And if cis women are telling you you're hitting too hard, you're hitting too hard. And that helps other people, even other men who would speak up, who, who don't speak up because patriarchy says men have to take it. Mm -hmm. um, but it also makes it safer for uh, non-binary people to take the field. So, you know, uh, uh, I, I think it, I, I call it the reverse Karen, you know, it kind of, you, you do need a Karen every once in a while to speak up about things. Mm -hmm. um, and we need their help. Uh, we just need to channel that energy for good um, <laughs> right. to help people out. Um, some people are just not comfortable speaking up. And that the other part is just helping people find their voice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey, talk to me. You know, uh, it's one thing to have a person of color, a, pers a transgender person, an LGBTQAI person um, on the field, but are you actually making friends with them? Yeah. You know, are you actually creating a, an honest friendship and relationship with that person? Because AmpGuard is a family, first and foremost. It's a game. We play a game. Mm -hmm. It's true. But it's 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 more than that. It's family. It's the only reason why we've survived this pandemic is that we've kept in touch with our families during this time and motivated people to come back because we missed our families yeah. during the time. And that's how you get people to come back. That's how I always um, explain it to my friends is like we're our own like subculture um, that that's super tight knit. So, yeah, I mean, we're like the Uber geeks. Let's be honest here. Like. Even D and D people look at us sideways. Like, yeah, you guys are way out there. Like, way out. We're like way out there. You mm -hmm. know, Larpers. We're we're way out there for in the geek community. We're like, mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, we we really do need to keep that um, that feel of of, of friendship of uh, you know whatever. And and like I try to get other moms into the game uh, because they're helpful and uh, I guess, uh, you know, making sure kids are okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like people don't, they don't realize how the importance and need of blanket bunnies because um, they're the ones who are keeping an eye on other people's stuff so it doesn't walk away. Mm -hmm. They're keeping an eye on each other's kids 
you know, uh, taking turns so that, you know, mom can go out and play barbarian for a little bit. Um, you know, we're, uh, we, we really need more of those people in the game uh, because, you know, having been in the game over 30 years, you lose people when they become parents. They're like, well, I can't play now because who's going to watch my kid, right? Yeah. Um, I like to encourage more women to take the field. Non-binary people to take the field, transgender people to take the field. I encourage that. And sometimes they need an, a person to watch their person, their little person. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I've, I'm not, I think the, one of the reasons why I haven't pushed so hard, aside from the fact that I make kidney stones that make my life miserable, um, I've, I've put more effort into um, park time. Um so that other people can enjoy the park as much. I mean, I'm fifth, I'm going to be 50 in February. Mm -hmm. um, my glory days are probably behind me. <laughs> um, so I want to see other people do what I didn't do. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to encourage a younger me to go out there and not be afraid to win at tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, not be afraid to, you know, have the guys get disappointed that they lost to you. Um, and, and let them know that it's okay. Uh, make a, make a space that's safe. Um, I, I, I'm not a fan of, um, putting in them into the current tournament spaces because mm -hmm. honestly, there's a lot of really bad sportsmanship when you have, uh, and I can't fix that. I don't know how to fix that. Yeah, there's a lot uh, of ego that currently exists uh, in tournaments. Oh, yeah. That's um, true. So would you say that you're a big proponent of women's and non-binary tournaments? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I've seen way better sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen uh, just... Uh, you know, people who are ready, you know, who are like, you know what? Okay. I didn't win that. That's fine. You know, they don't toss their weapons off to the side. They don't start screaming, you know, at whoever's reaving that day or whatever. Mm -hmm. They, they just like, okay, I didn't win. Yeah. That's fine. I, my, I'm, my birthday is still on the same day. Mm -hmm. I'm still the same person I was when I walked in and I'm going to learn for that situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I think that as it builds their confidence in those spheres, um, I think it translates well for them to go into um, in, into the regular tournament schedule. Um, I think that if you go into a regular tournament and somebody's sloughing you, it's going to make you crazy. And you might not ever do it again, mm -hmm. uh, number one. Uh, number two, I've seen some really good talent in the women's tournament. Um, I've seen uh, I've seen some people who uh, who would have gotten a fifth order of the warrior in a women's and non-binary persons tournament who is easily better than um, another person's eighth because they were in a duchy that was like tiny and had no competition yeah um so i i think that um it's a good training ground for them to get their um their swings mm -hmm. in the places that they need to be um to practice you know uh 3d uh, movement right um, and then and then move on move on to the majors as I would say so um, another question yeah, another question ahead. I have um, as a transgender person or as a non-binary person or as a female adjacent person um, who is placing well in tournaments how do you handle um, sore losers or um, to like further on to that, like, let's say that I'm witnessing this, how can I help that situation? Right? Like, yeah, especially well, without you know, escalating it. I'm so I'm a terrible person to ask that because I really, 
just don't care. Like, mm-hmm. I know people slough my shots. I watch them slough my shots. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't change who I am. I, I, you know, it's not my, it's not my goal to be a warlord or a sword knight. I want to do better. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I won't, I'll be honest. I don't mind people crying in their beer after they lose to me. Um, that's, that's okay. Um, and, um, and, and I do have some skills, you know, uh, and I, I mean, when I lived in Dragon Spine, I got to fight with the wheel on the regular, and I love those guys. Those guys are fun. Mm-hmm. And um, I get to fight my husband, who's a sword knight. Um, so I, I'm, I'm definitely okay at what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, that's not really been my goal. My goal has just been to have fun at Amp Guard and encourage other people to fight. Mm-hmm. Now, when I'm looking at other people, it's it's about... Um, helping them find their confidence and then ha- finding good reeves, making sure those reeves are really good at, you know, calling things or resetting things like start again, do it again, mm-hmm. or what have you. But really it's all about culture. It's, it's a culturation and that's, it's going to take a while before we can, can, uh, make people comfortable at losing. I mean, some, you know, it, it's, it's a game. Mm-hmm. It's literally just a game. Um, and like, I've listened to sword knights talk about how they got from here to there. And there's a lot of, you know, Oh, I swept the leg Johnny. Mm-hmm. Like they knew the leg was bad and they just went for it because it was all about winning. Mm-hmm. Or winning at all costs, and I don't think women are like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that if we change our culture to just doing the best shots we can and figuring it all out, like the best sword knights are people who know they're going to lose. They know that they're not infallible. Mm-hmm. Um, they they work a combo, and maybe the combo didn't work on this other sword knight that they were fighting because that sword knight was taller, or was faster, or you know, what have you. I mean, those are all part of the fighting in 3D situation. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other fact of fighting is you don't get better unless you fight better people. Right. And if if you're not constantly, you know, if if you want to be that person, if you want to be that the first non-binary sword knight or the first woman sword knight um it's not just about how good you are as a person Mm -hmm. it's about working on the culture of amp guard to get people to understand that it's we're just all trying to do our best here Mm -hmm. you don't have to win at all costs you do not have to be a rhino and you know not take shots from women or non-binary people and in fact if we as a culture decide that, you know, we, I wouldn't say the word shun, but I would say, you know, look at people and go, really, really? Mm -hmm. Um, Then, then maybe we can finally change the culture. Yeah. But it's, it's not going to change until people just accept that it's, it's a sport that, you know, um, having a white belt doesn't make your life better. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't increase your credit score. Um, it, right. it, 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 it just shows that at that time and place and space, you are able to deliver the necessary blows to, you know, defeat so many different opponents. Mm-hmm. That's all it says. Um, so I, I want to see um, better fighters, better people fighters, better people. How about that? Just instead of better fighters, just better people. Better people. The people, better people with better skills. I can get behind that. Yeah. I mean, I think Sir Gillen was even talking today at Park. He's like, I'm not sure why griffins aren't taken in check when people are up for their sword belts. Yeah, like right? it should be a requirement that you have a few griffins if you're going to be a sword knight. Yeah. Cuz I feel like back in the day griffins griffins counted towards a sword belt back oh, wow. back in the day. 
I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, the current king of uh, the Burning Lands mm -hmm. um, got his through griffins. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Back in the old days, back in the two in the 1900 amp guard. <laughs> <laughs> Adelia and I don't I'm know about that. that. I'm like, oh, back in the 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't have any griffins, so clearly my field honor is lacking. <laughs> I don't have any griffins either, so obviously no. I'm not honorable at all. If, if you're the, the, the other trick is having, uh, having a belt line. So if you're in a belt line, you know your your knight, your squire, your whatever needs to hype you up. I'm just saying, okay? Well, I'm just saying. We went through a spell in our kingdom where if it didn't ladder into a belt it the awards kind of got left in the dust and so i think we gave our first griffin out at park today for like the first time in very long time like i don't think i've seen a griffin in a very long time and i know wow. when i started and i was reading about awards i was like i want a griffin i want a griffin so bad i was like i don't care yeah. if it i don't care about knighthood i've been <laughs> in the game for three weeks yeah right i want to be seen as I honorable like if everything else I I think non-ladder awards are are really inspiring. I think that, um, you know, I, I when I was in office a lot, I I was uh, I I wasted a lot of paper. There a lot of paper died, yep. a lot of trees died under under me. Um, but I think it was necessary to let people know, hey, I see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's uh, even if it's just a little piece of paper that you know. It, it, we used to call them paper plate awards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they literally, we put them on a paper plate and we just toss them out to people. <laughs> and, you know, it would be like, uh, and, and for the, uh, the, the craziest shot combo goes to, you know, the <laughs> yeah. person from, mm -hmm. you know, they, they did this like crazy, you know, you know, thing with, you know, where Full anime you, intro style, like exactly <laughs> that whole, uh, you're like that, that was awesome. Or best death this, mm -hmm. you know, three months was this person. And, uh, and honestly, deaths are really not as well played in our game as they used to be. They, they were amazing. And, um, good Reeves used to give people like a shorter death or, not that we have that need anymore because mm -hmm. V8, but, um, you know, we used to have a longer count for death mm -hmm. or fewer deaths or like. Because there um, used to be like a life system, right? We have this thing at our local park um, where we play orc ball. And one of the rules that we often make is you can half your respawn time if you like dramatically role play your death. That's awesome. That's the way it should be. And that's, <laughs> and that encourages flurbiness. I mean, go flurbs. Um, I, I mean, really, uh, and, and, and look the part and do all the other stuff. Like it's, it's all related. Like our, I, I used to encourage, and I still do encourage our, uh, our artisans, our garbers to make garbs for new fighters. Um, you know, show off their work by showing it off on some up and coming fighter, mm -hmm. you know, um, that kind of thing. And, uh, and, and it really gets people excited about the game, you know? So, you know, who, who, nobody wants to show up in t-shirt and jeans and, and then like, they're a good fighter, but they don't look great. You know, they want right. to, they want to, they want to have it all. They want to have it all. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you try and, and and marry those things together get you know people to have some buy-in and 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 make some stuff and you know it's all good or you know like say for instance you show up to a zord night boot camp with all hello kitty i mean just sometime <laughs> it's just a thing that you gotta do because I, and I and I told them when i got there you know i bring my flurb to your sword i expect your sword and my flurb mm -hmm. you know it's it it makes the whole thing better yep. um when when everybody does their little part um so i don't know i'm i'm a little bit of, i'm left and right brain so mm -hmm. you know my brain is all about the arts and the fights and the the things it's mm -hmm. 
just to find out. Yeah. And um, going into a different direction, since I can't yeah. stay in one place at one time, um, I'm friends with you on Facebook, and I noticed a couple of months ago that you were having a lot of um, activism slash issues with some transphobia from some knights in... Was it your kingdom or a different kingdom? No, it was in it was in another kingdom. That was back in January, mm -hmm. and it was it was mostly. So I I have a lot of issues in general mm -hmm. with transphobia. In, in fact, at one point, as we I all should. My own, yeah. Well, I um before I actually embraced the the transgender thing, mm -hmm. I'd always been. Everybody knew I was non-binary. Mm -hmm. I, you know, whatever, but I didn't actually claim, claim the transgender things. I didn't want to take up space that I didn't think I mm -hmm. should take up. And then it was, it was other transgender people who are like, Oh, come on. No, <laughs> you're just <laughs> as transgender as the rest of us. You mm -hmm. are gender non-conforming. So you are definitely one of us and you should definitely claim it. So I did, but before then, uh, just before the pandemic, my dad was posting some really hateful transgender stuff and I unfriended him on Facebook. I called him up on the phone. I'm like, listen, I've been trying to like have conversation with you about this stuff. And I no, mm -hmm. no, I, I, I want to still like you. So I am not going to, I'm not going to Facebook be your, be your Facebook friend anymore. Cause this is no, this is not cool. Mm -hmm. Not acceptable uh, behavior. Not okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, then this past uh, January, um, uh, I, I saw some stuff being posted, um, and I wasn't even friends with this guy, mm -hmm. but the way the Facebook algorithm works is this way. If that person has mutuals with you and they comment mm -hmm. and enough of them comment, you're going to be dragged straight to that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and the closer you live to that person, the more likely you're going to be dragged into the middle of that thing. Mm -hmm. um, because that's how the Facebook algorithm works. The more controversy is dusted up, the more comments that are on this thing, mm -hmm. the more Facebook is just like, oh, you have LARPing in common. Oh, you're at Amp Guard in common. Oh, you like all these different things in common. Oh, and you live close by. And you have all these friends in common, like Facebook drags you mm -hmm. um, like a steer to a rodeo um, to these posts. Mm -hmm. And it was it was full on public. It wasn't like it was a private thing that I couldn't see. Mm -hmm. It was on public. And I think that that's equivalent to uh, picking on uh, a person of color in the parking lot at amp guard yeah and you're wearing all your garb people know that you're a, an amp guarder mm -hmm. um and they're watching you call this person all kinds of racist epithets mm -hmm. it makes amp guard look bad yeah and um if you know i mean you gotta if you're gonna be racist or transphobic or whatever in amp guard you need to like not make that a public thing yeah. That should not be something you're proud of having conversation about in public uh, because we are about diversity. Mm -hmm. And um, it, people should definitely stand up and say that's not cool. Um, but I, I definitely take offense to anybody calling my transgender sisters ill or mentally ill mm -hmm. or any of those things because they're not. And um, so I will, I will stand up every time. And if it's somebody who people ought to respect because they have a white belt, I'm going to be upset about that mm -hmm. because we need to be more inclusive, not less inclusive than the rest of Amp Guard. Yeah. And I, I think that that's fantastic. And I can't applaud you enough for, for standing up for what you believe in and especially standing out against transphobia in the game. I um I mean I'm transgender. I have a a few transgender uh people on my belt line mm -hmm. and I want this game to be safe for them wherever they go. Yeah. So
So speaking of your belt line, let's get into that. <laughs> let's get into that. I have an amazing belt line. Um, and some of them I've cobbled together from uh, from from different places. So um, my my very, very first page when I was a squire um, is uh, he lives in Albuquerque. His real name is Diego Cotting. His uh, amp guard name, hold on, he hasn't played in a while, so my brain is drawing a blank right now. Um, I might have to cheat by looking on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but he literally hasn't played in like five or six years, so um, it's fair. It's fair, but I keep him on the belt line anyway because someday he's going to come back. I know he is. Right now he's doing life. Yeah. Um, and um, he's a really, really cool dude. Um then the next person in my belt line um, is Mythic the Historian. Mm -hmm. And um, she's a really funny story because she's she's relatively new to Amp Guard. I mean, mm -hmm. she's only been in maybe two and a half years. Um, but um, we both lived in Vegas at the time when I met her. And she, she she's a lot like me. First of all, we're karaoke addicts. <laughs> and um we're type a personalities um you know and um obsessive compulsive is probably another word that we like to use a lot mm -hmm. um anyway she she has a lot of uh characteristics that are like me in that uh, if we were going to work on something we just we would just work it until we work it but um uh, before she even got into my belt line she had just started getting involved in amp guard and she was talk about buying a house and she says and then i'm just gonna have this room a craft room and i'm just gonna buy just enough fabric not too much because <laughs> i'm gonna be buying a house i'm not gonna let it get crazy and i'm like oh honey um even my son was like who's you know who's 22 and he's been in amp guard all his life even if he looked at her like oh honey this is mm, it's it's you know, nice to have goals like that but, whether or not we meet them but that's not yeah. how a craft room works that's not how a craft room works <laughs> no you get addicted and you buy like someday i'm going to use this fabric and it doesn't you know you have a hoard that you keep on for 10 30 years as my yeah. mother has it's 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 an illness it's an illness. Um, but yeah, she bought her first sewing machine and she says, I'm going to put that in my sewing room and I'm just going to have just enough stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's cute. Um, anyways, she was a dabbler then. She is full on amp guard addict now. So <laughs> she is the uh, AI uh, fundraising team lead now oh, wow. for amp guard. And she's help helping um, various different regions of amp guard raise money. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we have AI fees to pay and things to do. Mm -hmm. um, so she, she knows that some kingdoms don't have big events to raise money. So AI is trying to raise money so that the, even those kingdoms can participate yeah. in the game and not risk losing their status as a kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, so she's, she's thinking outside the box so that, you know, we can focus on the things that we really love, like programming mm -hmm. and stuff. So um, I'm really proud of her. She's doing great work. And then she's also been really involved in our kingdom on the fundraising side and mm -hmm. doing other stuff too. So she started off fundraising here in kingdom and then she got picked up by the AI board, uh, AI people. Mm -hmm. and, That's awesome. Uh, she's, she's kicking butt and taking names. Like I said, only been in the game like less than three years and now she's running a major committee. So she's nice. pretty awesome. Um, Let's see, the next person, um, let's see, one of my squires just is just hopped a plane. He's moving to Alaska. Oh. Um, so I'm going to miss him a lot. He was just an hour and a half away. Now he's going to be hours and hours away. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I have more excuse to go visit Alaska. So yeah. that, that'll be really good. But he's a, he's a social worker mm -hmm. in real life. And he has been our kingdom mental health guildmaster. Uh, for several reasons. That's um, cool. Yeah, he, he advocates, you know, good mental health practices and checking in with people and letting people have feels and, mm -hmm. you know, letting people know, hey, if you're having a really rough time, just let me know, who, you know, what's going on. 
And then he's reached out to other uh, mental health professionals in the AMP Guard, and they have like their own little group, um, you know, to support each other. Because I'm like, you can't do this by yourself. You're going to lose your mind. Right. You yeah. have to um, coordinate with other people. You have to help each other out. You need to be each other's sounding board because that's hard work. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm pretty proud of his work in that regard. And now he's taken his goodness and sunshine and positivity uh, to Alaska. So um, pretty excited about him there. My my other squire, uh, her name is uh, Bridget Hatch. Um, uh, uh, sorry, last squire, did I mentioned his, uh, I didn't even mention his name, Brad Myers and uh, Halva Harati is his name. Mm-hmm. And then my third squire is Bridget Hatch and her amp guard name is Blood School Biter. <laughs> And um, she and I have been friends since we uh, moved to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And um, I helped her uh, in her coming out when she uh, announced that uh, she was a, a transgender woman. And so I reintroduced her to our park. Mm-hmm. And I said, no need to change the name that you know her by. She's still Blood Skull Biter. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, you know, now she's going to have, you know, flowers in her hair when she's killing me. Does, so, does she play barbarian or? She plays, uh, well, she's a, an orc healer. She plays healer, but she, I'm trying to remember, uh, I, I made her, I made her a, 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 a wiki, uh, an amp wiki. So I always get, uh, I, I, I don't think she's a goblin. I think she's an orc. Um, and, uh, but she sounds she's like an orc name. Cool. It's a good orc yeah. name. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an awesome orc name. <laughs> um, and, you know, she's been working on inclusivity and diversity uh, projects and whatnot and uh, has been has been absolutely phenomenal. On, um, I, I served for two years as our uh, Kingdom Board of Directors pre- uh, chair. Mm-hmm. And um, she has served as our liaison and as our secretary and uh, a whole bunch of other things. I think now she is the vice chair, maybe, maybe. Um, no, uh, yes. So, um, anyways, uh, she's been a great big help um, getting our kingdom back on track um, as far as the mundane world of stuff that needs to get done and projects and whatnot. So, um, she's been very instrumental in that. Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, really, uh, I guess, being really vocal about transgender issues since she's got her own real crosses to bear in real life and, and uh, at work and at home and all the other stuff. So um, it's been amazing watching her growth um, in that regard. Um, let's see. Who else do I have? I have her wife, uh, Tiffany Hatch. And uh, her amp guard name is Serene. Mm-hmm. And um, Serene is an amazing artist. She she does everything. She she paints. She um, she she's really good at three D. Um, uh, like I, I don't. I, it's not my, my it's not my field. But she she makes these like three uh, D panoramic model things uh, with you know mountains and scenery and stuff like that it's it's really really pretty and um it's it's getting a little bit more intricate Mm -hmm. and um so uh i've been i've been trying to pair her with more people so if anybody's listening to this and does a lot of that kind of work just hit me up so i can hook you up with my my... i do painting and stuff like that we'll have to find the uh amp guard model train people they'll probably be able to help (laughs) with the 3d right i just it's not my thing and I want to, you know, uh, I have lots of talent, but that's not one of them. Um, mm-hmm. But she's, but she's also just the sweetest, nicest person. Um, just uh, like anybody, if you come to the park, she'll be one of the first people to say hi and hello and introduce mm-hmm. herself. And mm-hmm. um, she's, she's, she's one of those good hearts that keeps a park alive. Um, because she doesn't, she doesn't have any ill will towards anybody. Mm-hmm. She just talks to everybody. She picked a very um, good name then. Yeah, she picked <laughs> an excellent human. 
Um, I have a, uh, a, I have a ward. And so I let them all pick their own names. So if you look at my AMP wiki, you can see that, you know, one's a shield maiden, mm -hmm. uh, another one's a, a standard bearer, uh, another one was a cleric, now he's a, he's a squire. Um, I let them pick what they wanted to be called. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as long as it was within the at arms rubric. Mm -hmm. um, so I have three squires and then a whole bunch of at arm equivalents. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as they, they do more work, as they show that they have leadership qualities and I get them moved up a little bit more mm -hmm. to do, to do things. Um, um, so I have a ward that I share with another knight and, uh, she's her page. She's my ward. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, we're, we're sort of like a polyamorous uh, belt line. <laughs> We're like, we can, love, we can both love on you. It's all good. No worries. Make mm -hmm. no big deal. Uh, and uh, she's, uh, she's right now working and, uh, and currently she's got a bun in the oven. So, you know, she's got more important things than to worry about specific amp guard stuff. So mm -hmm. when she, when she's ready to, you know, push the gas pedal a little bit harder, I'm, I'm ready to, to help her out a little bit more. But in the meantime, it's just about, how to deal with personalities. Personalities are hard. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, uh, just life. She's got lots of life questions. Um, and I do that. I, I've, I've written letters of recommendations mm -hmm. for people in my belt line before uh, because they're, they're my family. I take them very seriously. Mm -hmm. And so I have lots of really great things to say because I keep track of them and we keep track of each other. We have a, our own little Facebook chat that we encourage each other and keep each other up to date on what's going on. And we're, we're a pretty active little belt line, um, as far as that's concerned. So, yeah. um, let's see, that's Molly Croft, uh, I was get her last name confused because I have another person who has a last name who has very similar, but her first name is Molly mm -hmm. and her last name is Crossmer. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. Oh. Um, Yes. I find it really cool that you uh, have written letters of recommendation. I know I've used the person that I'm belted to as a uh, reference before on job applications. So I think that being able to do real life things with your belt family is super, super awesome and really kind of important to the relationship that's there. Well, I think people also forget that, you know, real life is more important than Amp Guard. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with real life first. You got to pay bills as best you can, mm -hmm. do what you can. Um, and that's, you, you can lose people very quickly, not because of the game, but because life happened to them. Right. And, um, so if you want some longevity on your belt line, you keep an eye on them and see what you can do to help them out and mm -hmm. give them some tips. I'm not like the best at anything, but, um, I'm willing to, you know, stand up and say, I, I will be your biggest cheerleader. That's, that's what I do. Um, so that's that's a that's a huge that's a huge part of it i think um let me see i'm i'm going through my my group members because it makes it a lot easier uh so i told you about molly i told you about brad i told you about bridget and tiffany uh diego is trigvald that's his real name that's his amp guard name mm -hmm. the first one i was telling you about mm -hmm. uh, molly um that brings me to Michael Beasley, who's Brother Bees and his park. Mm -hmm. um, and I met him online uh, because he created a group of people. It was like just a little household mm -hmm. of people, amp garters pretending to be ants. <laughs> and, <it's laughs> mm -hmm. and I was immediately attracted because I love ants and ants are cool. And I have a history with ants. I got bitten by like 50 ants at my wedding. <laughs> um, and ha that was the first day I ha used my married name in a hospital. I had to sign my name because <laughs> ants, they love me so much. They all ate me at the same time. It was great. Um, but no, I just love ants. Ants are cool. So um, they, they made me queen. I got elected to be queen of this group and we renamed it to Ant Guard. And <laughs> 
it's a really good group of people. They're very sweet, and and we 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 make all kinds of jokes. We we need to be a little bit more active, and that's partly my fault. But um, it's a fun group. I, oh my goodness, there's just so much shenanigans. I would be interested in being an aunt, if you. Oh yes, me, do so. please just join. We're really easy people. <laughs> I swear. And, and you get we're, we're you're gonna get like cool thirty new requests once this airs. Just. You yeah, want to so be part aware. of Ant Guard? <laughs> that would be great. We would love it. That would that would be so much. We were actually talking about maybe like when you know when big events are big events again that we could, you know, go out as a household and just you know, ant it up. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. That would be really cool. Yeah, you can make like a little what is it, fireman's train, <laughs> like for a moving a, stuff. Yeah, yeah. bucket brigade oh, yeah. going on. <laughs> no, I'm I, um, I'm I'm a half decent um, druid. You know, we could we could make a real chain there. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, get a couple of healers, and then just keep sending people out all the time. Just you know, resing them, reviving them, re and oh, a good wizard even, um, and reanimating them, and just. If Keep you get doing it. if you get me a bard, it's I'll like, play Res Monk. It'll be fun. It'll be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like you you could take 20 ants and make it seem like a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be awesome. You know, it 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 would be awesome. But yeah, we, we we've talked about that. And we've we've talked we talked about a couple of other things too. Um, and then the pandemic ate us. Um, so we just need to get back on track again. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I love them. So that's how I met him. He created the group. And I'm like, oh, I like this go-getter kind of guy. <laughs> you know, so after I got elected, and not before, <laughs> after I got elected queen, um, I asked him to be a member of my belt line. So he's my at arms. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a really cool dude. And I like his partner too. Um, Let's see. Who else do I have in here? We have, I have uh, uh, an at arms. Uh, his name is CJ Stevens in real life. Mm -hmm. And his amp guard name is Siege Lucretius. And he also did uh, a full two-year term on our kingdom board of directors. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did uh, part of that time as our, uh, he was vice chair for a little while. And then he became our treasurer. And then now he's off the board and he's basically keeping an eye on his own park. His own park was starting to have some issues during the pandemic and he's bringing them back. But um, he also did a really huge, amazing fundraiser um, during the pandemic that paid for our AI dues. So um, that was really nice. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> it was hard to, or, you know, raise money. Mm -hmm. uh, but he also wrote a lot of the new code for our kingdom too. Mm -hmm. uh, so he and... Um, Another friend of mine, Jason Carter, who is now on the board again, is now our secretary. Um, they did a lot of writing of the stuff that we have. So we have, uh, during the uh, in our first year on the board together, um, they created language so that we had like a park dues, mm -hmm. and they were graduated by size, mm -hmm. so that we had like at least half of what we need to pay to AI every year just mm -hmm. from park dues. Yeah. Um, so it's not a whole lot of money, but it was enough, you know, that we didn't have to like have a big fundraiser yeah. to come up with it. And then they also came up with language, um, to create a fundraising committee mm -hmm. for the kingdom. And, um, that has raised some money through online auctions and stuff mm -hmm. even during the pandemic. Nice. So I think we're all up to, I think we're caught up cool. on AI dues mm -hmm. at this point for, for both of their efforts. Mm -hmm. So that's been pretty awesome yeah. and I, I'm really glad I'm really proud of the work he's done and then he was also the one who was instrumental in getting our part our kingdom to have uh, insurance for the kingdom yeah. for our park system oh, nice. so he went out and found out you know found some got some quotes did the research brought them back to the board so that we can go through all the different options and then we voted on it so um, he's doing pretty, some pretty awesome stuff too um, and I'm, I'm really proud of the work that he's been doing there. Um, who else do I have? So the rest of my belt line, I already gave you all the people who are, um, who came in as at arms and squires and whatnot, but, mm -hmm. um, 
I, uh, the other two people in my belt line are actually other knights. So we are each other's at arms mm-hmm. in our respective paths. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I first got knighted, I was sort uh, I was knighted knight of the the flame. Mm-hmm. And I I had a knight. I still have a knight. Um, and he's a three belted knight. He's everything but serpent. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not as active in the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was okay with me taking up other knights as uh, mentors. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the first person that I became an at arms to is uh, Dame Scry. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was knighted with us is that... uh, the first time around. Is that Scry who does the stained glass stuff? That's the same one. Uh, yes. I met her at Symposium. She was oh, yeah. she was yeah. belted to Sir Duffer. Oh, yes. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Nice. How cool. Small world. So she uh she we got knighted at the same time. I got my flame and my husband got his flame and she got her um uh, uh her serpent belt. Nice. So I said, "Hey, um, I can teach you flame. You can teach me serpent. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yes. <laughs> so she we, seems excellent from to, what I know to of do her. that. Oh, she's an amazing person. I love her. And she's like a sister. She is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people don't realize that she's also a person of color because she's Native American. Oh. Um, and um, she's also bi. Mm-hmm. So um it, it, she's she's just a, she's an all-around awesome human i'm just gonna say um uh, and a teacher and stuff so i mean i love teachers all my love to teachers out there because my sister uh was a teacher my mom was a teacher's aide mm-hmm. so there's lots of love for education here good um so anyways we did that and then it uh it took me a little while to convince my friend uh, uh so scry is um I know her name. It's right here on the tip of my tongue. Uh-uh. Courtney Miles in real in mundane life. Mm-hmm. Um, Dame Scry. And then um, and then a little while later, I convinced uh, Rory Monroe, who is Sir Saint Von Jester, um, who was a knight of the crown. I said, hey, I am like this close on that crown thing. Do you want to do this mutual thing and I'll help you with the flame thingy? Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, sure. <laughs> so now we have this this thing going on. So mm-hmm. this interconnected belt line. Mm-hmm. And then um, it's been nice. We like each other. That does Hopefully. sound really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew Amp Garters could be so cooperative? See, I didn't know that you were allowed to be belted to someone after you were a knight which means that now i can convince lexi to let me stay her man at arms (laughs) yes i have such a nice belt and i just want to wear it forever (laughs) yes well it's a it's a new uh trend Mm -hmm. in amp guard actually Mm -hmm. to do it that way It, it makes the amp wiki a little bit crazy but um it. I think it really helps because, um, I mean, I, I haven't really geared up my stuff. I'm at my eighth uh, Garber, mm-hmm. um, so I just have a few more to go on that, and then I also want to level up some dragons before I attempt that run at the Serpent Belt. Um, so, you know, that's that's where I'm at. Right now I have a frozen shoulder. This one right here, black, mm-hmm. black is jerk. Um, <laughs> I have just... I was just diagnosed last week with frozen shoulder. What's so frozen shoulder? I, basically, I can't move my arm much higher than than this. Oh wow! Without it causing full of ow. So, uh, frozen shoulder is rare. Mm-hmm. Um, it happens mostly to people like me who are diabetic, mm-hmm. um, or have other some other autoimmune disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happens is that crystals as i was explained and hopefully i do a good justice to how it's explained to me by my rheumatologist Mm -hmm. and by my uh orthopedist um that crystals develop in the tendons Mm -hmm. and just lock your shoulder into place 
Mm -hmm. So moving it any direction is seriously painful. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I believe that there's, there's like cartilage and, and joint action that's going on that literally I cannot move my arm up like more than 25 degrees. Wow. Um, But the, uh, the other issue that we're investigating right now is that um, I also might have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a genetic disease that affects the joints. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, it affects, what it is, is it's a, uh, it's a disease that affects the connective tissue Mm -hmm. in your body, which literally is all over your body Mm -hmm. and uh, is, is, it's hard to, well, most people can go anywhere from 10 to, for me, 30 years before it gets officially diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Um, So my next step is to go see a geneticist. Um, What what people with Ehlers-Danlos have a problem with is uh, when our body makes collagen, it doesn't make it right. The recipe is wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, So we don't uh, scar like everybody else. Um, our, our joints are really good at being tossed out of joint easily. Yeah, you have hypermobility, right? Where you yeah. Can... So like, I always knew I was flexible. Mm-hmm. I always knew that, but, um, you know, my, my rheumatologist was like, so can you bend your thumb to your wrist? I'm like, oh yeah, look at this. And they're like, what? <laughs> you like, can you do the splits? Oh yeah. Heck Yeah. <laughs> can you touch the floor with the flat of your hand? I'm like, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I don't even know which way does it bend? Oh, oh at least let me, uh, let me get my little thingy here. I was charging does my phone cool? at the same time I was talking with you, but I can, I can show you. I can show you. So you take your thumb mm-hmm. and you touch. <gasps> Yeah, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> I don't I don't think we're <laughs> I can get to the other side of my hand. That's nuts. <laughs> That's awesome. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So which also allows me to throw shots that other people can't. Yeah. Like, um, like my Lexi's elbows from, Oh, do your elbows, elbows hyper extend? Like 'cause my yeah. I had a friend in high school that we uh she could do that. She would just like flop them out and they would just bend down. And we yeah. pranked our German teacher one time because he does weird things and we were singing happy birthday and he decided to like land on her and he, she came up to him. She's like, you broke me. <laughs> 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 and he almost cried. <laughs> but she but yes, just... it does cause like issues with like your joints popping out of socket and mm-hmm. other things like that too, right? Well, and it, well, I mean, other things too, like I currently have an umbilical hernia. Mm. So hernias are also common with people with Ehlers-Danlos. Mm-hmm. Um, we, there's, 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 there's a lot. I'm, I'm, and this ha- like I got diagnosed a, a week ago Friday. So it's been like nine days mm-hmm. since they, they're like, oh, we're just going to, just wanted to let you know that you're, you know, you're hypermobile. And I'm like, okay. And I said, well, that could affect your joints too. Cause you, go further than you're supposed to go and mm-hmm. and all this other stuff and you know you might have Ehlers-Danlos <laughs> so they didn't come out and say you do have Ehlers-Danlos mm-hmm. um and there are 13 types of Ehlers-Danlos oh wow so um one of the most dangerous one is the one that involves the heart and the people who get that usually don't live past 42 oh um so I don't think I'm one of those, mm-hmm. but, um, but, uh, there's, there's like lots of stuff that fits. Like I didn't, it wasn't on my list of things to be concerned about, but ironically, I met a friend who lives up here mm-hmm. in the, where I live now uh, that I had met last year before the pandemic. And I only met her in person once, but she has Ehlers-Danlos. And just mysteriously out of nowhere, she invites me to join the Ellers Danlos group of Las Vegas when I was living there. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I have it that bad. You know, <laughs> it's 
No. And then I realized that the people who were joining were literally the people who had worst case scenario were Ehlers Danlos. Mm. That uh, when I looked up the symptoms, it's entirely possible. But now I'm not a doctor, at least not that kind. Mm -hmm. um, so I, but I've been a very strong advocate for my health for a very long time. And I, that's another thing. If I could tell people who are female adjacent and female and female adjacent is, um, you know, your body better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And if you are getting gaslighted by your doctor, then, you know, even if at the risk of them calling you a hypochondriac or whatever, you find a doctor who actually listens to you. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't have money to see a doctor, you know, seek out a clinic or what have you, uh, demand tests. What, what I've heard um, really helps is if you uh, feel like you need a certain test or something like that, um, you can say, I want it noted in my medical records that you denied me this test. Exactly. Because that's the only way, you know, they have to literally, you know, be threatened with litigation for them to take you seriously sometimes. Yeah. So from my personal experience, when I was in my twenties, I went to my personal doctor and, um, I said, Hey, I feel like I have a lump in my breast. The, the Zetas gave me this really cool shower card that I put in my shower that taught me how to do my own self breast examination. And I'm like, I found a lump and he's like, I don't feel anything. You know, it's just your time of the month. You're young. So it's, that's probably what it is. And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was in August by February, I couldn't even move my arms. Like it was, I was in so much pain. There was so much inflammation. Mm -hmm. And then by that point, he's like, oh, oh, I do feel something. So then he sent me to get an ultrasound and the ultrasound was inconclusive. So then he sent me, they, the people there like, oh, we'll just do a mammogram on the spot. So they did a mammogram. The mammogram was inconclusive. And then I had to go to, uh, they're like, okay, well then we'll send you to a surgeon. And the surgeon does what's called like a needle aspiration. Mm -hmm. They stick a needle in your boob to see if water comes out. Mm -hmm. And if it's water, then it's just a cyst. And if it's not water then you got to go under the knife so they could take it out see what it is and identify it mm -hmm. and do that that was 20 some odd years ago mm -hmm. so the science is better now um but back then it was really scary but it left me with the tiniest of scars that nobody can see because it's under my bra mm -hmm. like not even you know people i've been married to or seriously dated even know it was there until i mentioned it to them mm -hmm. um so um it turns out i did not have um, cancer, I had what's called a fibrocystic adenema. Mm. And it's just a cyst, but just a really persistently ugly cyst. Mm. Um, and so I, I started making like uh, lifestyle changes so that I wouldn't get them again, or at least hopefully never get them again. But mm. surprise, last year I got another one. Um, and then I, but, 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 but it was here in Utah and it was a really easy procedure. Like one week I went in, they did a 3D mammogram, uh, no, 3D ultrasound. And then the 3D ultrasound was like, mm. so then they did an, a mammogram. And then um, they said, okay, well, next week you're just going to come in for a biopsy. And I thought it was going to be like a real scary biopsy, but no, it's, this is, it's almost like another little needle they stick in there, mm -hmm. except it takes out a chunk of your boob and they take it out like the small old another tiny small incision that nobody's ever going to see again mm -hmm. um and i got my results within two days so it was really really good same thing you know different year mm -hmm. and then ooh, they put a tag i'm tagged like a bird now <laughs> um so they can see if anything's changed so then the next time i came in they did another 3d ultrasound and they're like, nope, hasn't changed in size. And if I go back again in January, and if nothing's changed, then I'm good for a really long time, uh, at least for another 3,000 miles. <laughs> um, so um, that's pretty cool. Um, and then I, did we lose sound? No. I can still hear you. Okay, good. Um, so then, uh, so that's, so, so that happened. So back in, back in the 90s, like he didn't feel anything. And I'm like, I totally feel something. 
okay. <laughs> um, and then the next time, I, same doctor, I'm like, hey, I'm peeing blood and it's not cool uh, and it hurts. And he's like, oh, well, that's just you. You make UTIs all the time. And I'm like, is no, this, this is different. Is this your kidney stone? It's my first kidney stone. <laughs> yes. I actually had two that I, time. Oh, my very, God. very first time I had to be an overachiever and I had one in each kidney. Oh, I have a kidney stone story. Um, I had a kidney stone and it was the size of the tip of my thumb, like as big around as a dime and like the size of my thumb. And they had to use a... Uh, what is it? The sauna gram thing. The sonic lithotripsy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they did. Yeah. And they broke it apart. And then I expelled over 2000, uh, sand sized kidney stones over two weeks. It was terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hateful. Hateful. I've done, I've done laser lithotripsy twice. I've done the sonic lizard, uh, uh the sound wave lithotripsy once. Um, and it, having a kidney stone is just hateful. Um, so I, I'm a regular former of kidney stones. So I have my own urologist now and they keep an eye on me and they believe me now. Um, I have a really stupid high tolerance for pain. And I mean, mm -hmm. stupid high. Mm -hmm. um, so when I went to the emergency room after my doctor told me I had a UTI, I'm like, I'm in pain. I would really like to not be in pain could you take a look? And they're like, well, it must be a UTI. I mean, if it was like a kidney stone, you'd be begging for death. And I'm like, no, I don't want to get there. Would you please go do the thing? I said, would you at least, and this is where you come out and say, can you please do an x-ray? <laughs> and if they don't do the x-ray, they're like, would you please put that in my, my chart <laughs> that you denied me my x-ray. So they went and did the x-ray and they're like, oh my God, you have a kidney stone in each kidney. You should be like, like full of hate and crying and death and i'm like i really really want to avoid that but apparently they waited so long to get to this problem that i had to be hospitalized for a week because i had gone septic oh my god yeah yeah i've had a kidney stone where it like impacted um and then had fluid build up around the kidney and then they have to take a tube and like drain the fluid out. Um, yeah. Also miserable. Yeah. Yeah. So n since I've had so many and uh, knock on wood, I have not had one. I have, I have been, uh, I have been surgery operation free for five years. So uh, huzzah off for that. Um, but, uh, but I, I mean, I've really changed up my diet and I've really changed up. Uh, I drink water. Like I have water at my desk at all times um, and I have work accommodations so I can drink water until, you know, my kidneys are empty, um, rinse and repeat. Um, but uh, the, the, I, I also have, you know, other things. So I, I got told I had IBD. I got told I have like, like a whole bunch of other, other things that are interestingly check marks on the Ehlers-Danlos now, have you been diagnosed with this before? I'm like, interesting. Ninety-five of the ninety-five percent of these things I've been diagnosed with. I'm like, oh well, mm. um, chances are you might have Ehlers-Danlos. So I'm like, oh well, that's that's not fun. <laughs> um, so, anyways, that's uh, so kidney stones hate. Uh, I make uh, so we were able to catch one of them, mm -hmm. and I make calcium oxalate kidney stones. So one of the things I had to reduce my intake of is anything with oxalate, which is peanut butter. I love peanut butter, hummus, um, spinach. Um, what else did I do a lot of? I mean, I love those things in huge quantities because they're so good. They're mm -hmm. so good. I don't remember um, which one mine was, but I can't have Tums anymore. That's oh. the thing. Yeah, Tums have the, I think it's calcium bicarbonate. Mm. Uh, you, you might have been an, a, a, a calcium oxalate person former too then because the other one is mostly you have too much salt in your mm. diet is they, the they other didn't one. say anything about salt so it's probably calcium that's probably the calcium oxalate one also full of hate and like you know, no matter who they're no pointy how you and get evil them, yeah <laughs> there's a whole bunch of us rock golems in amp guard by the way um <laughs> As I was mentioning, the 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 king uh, the king of uh, the Burning Lands, 
uh, Sir Tristan. I don't know if he's still the king there. I think he is. Uh, he is also a multiple kidney stone maker. Um, so there's 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 a lot of us. Um, that just means I have a great career path ahead of me in Amtgard. You do. You <laughs> do. I mean, because it takes stones to be an Amtgard. Multi belts. You know? Right. Stones produce I'm multi belts, saying. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, but I, I just I just know that um, there is a lot of us, and if if you're persistent at life past kidney stones, uh, then you're probably persistent at life in other kinds of things too. So, uh, but but kidney stones are hate hate, um, and I I pass that on to my son too. I feel bad about that. Uh, so, it's it's a thing. But uh, but yeah, all of this to say, challenge your you know dear doctors. Um, advocate for know. yourself, advocate for your friends, whether it's your right. physical health, your mental health, or an amped guard. I mean, because we're socialized to just, you know, take whatever people send to us and, oh, if they have a, you know, MD after their name or a PA or whatever, uh, obviously they know more than us. But I'm like, no, it's your body. Like, mm -hmm. you know what's, what's normal and what's not normal with your body. And there's enough diversity in bodies, not just in the rainbow family. It's literally just diversity and physicality that 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 things happen. So you you know you you can't let them treat you like you're you know just a, another name, another face. They, if they start you know pushing you out the door like cattle, then you need to you know advocate for yourself and maybe find another doctor. And, and good health contributes to good fighting. I just can't say that enough. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Mm -hmm. um, so Stay hydrated. We, we are, Wear your sunblock. <laughs> <laughs> we are coming to our one hour and 30 minute mark. Typically to wrap things up, we will ask our guests um, their wackiest amped guard story. Uh, do you have anything in mind? Oh, gosh. There's I, I, I have a lot only because, you know, my blurb nature. Right. Plus um, being so in the I, game I since the eighties. Yeah, showing up to Sword Night Boot Camp and Hello Kitty. That's still my favorite. I really have to say that that was. I, I mean, the faces, the faces, the faces alone. The hardcore stick jacks just feeling like they were invaded by like the Smurfs or something. <laughs> it was. It was just the best. Um, but they were good sports about it, and and I learned a lot, and I and I encourage people to show up to Sword Knight Boot Camp, okay? If I showed up in Hello Kitty, all Hello Kitty, you can show up and just take the class seriously. Um, but if you're if you're fun and you're crazy enough, like I really encourage a whole bunch of people to show up in Hello Kitty together because that would be hilarious. Just saying. Awesome. Um, then they'll then they'll know that they can't mess with you. <gasps> There's a well is that hold on, you've got a fur cursed creature. I love fur creatures. Yeah, he's been sleeping in by Dally. Lap, but I wanted him to, to be here. This is my dog Bilbo. Oh, he, he's Bilbo. got ant guard garb. He does. He's got <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, he has his personal symbol is a hot dog. I love it so hard. Oh my goodness. I love ant critters, like all ant critters. And quite frankly, I am better at remembering people's ant critters' names than their own kids' names. So I don't know what's wrong with me, but that's that's a thing. Um, that's fine oh, with me. He's he's more important than I am, and he gets greeted way more enthusiastically than I ever have at any amp guard event. Well, well, Bilbo runs and says hello to people. He does. He forces me to run and say hello on his behalf. I was like, oh no, I have to be social. Bilbo, stop it. <laughs> I mean, oh, thanks, Bilbo. Hey. I, you know, I I'm the oldest in my family, mm -hmm. and uh, my dad was in the Marine Corps, so he moved around a lot. And if I didn't make friends for us, we didn't have friends. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I was, um, I, I'm an ambivert. Like I really sometimes want to be around people, but other times not so much. Um, but I, you know, I, um, I pushed myself so we could have some friends um, where we lived and where we moved. Um, and some people didn't like brown people in their, in their neighborhood. So I had to pick wisely. Mm. Um, but dogs, dogs and cats were always my favorite. Now, apparently, I have a pheromone 
that pets really love. Like I have friends who like, oh, you're not going to see my cat. My cat's really shy. And then the cat will come out to greet me. And they're like, <laughs> what just happened? Or a dog or whatever. But the, um, whatever pheromone that it is that I give off that they, they like, they either like or they really like and they want to eat me. Oh, no. um, yeah, I know. Like, I need to eat you. Like, I need to eat you up kind of a thing. And so I've been bitten a few times, but it is obvious that they were not mad at me. Yeah. You know, they, they had little waggy tails and happiness and they're like, oh, I just got to eat you. And I'm, so <laughs> I, I can only imagine that that's, you know, um, you know, what was the situation in, um, what was that movie? It was uh, the one with Bella and um, what's his name? That's the one. That's the one where he's like, oh, you just, you smell so good. I could just eat you. <laughs> I'm like, ah, that's, that's probably what my situation is with dogs and cats and stuff. Cause they just really need to eat me for some reason. I'm, I, I am tasty to pets like dog nip or cat nip or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't get but... it, but I love the dogs. So now, so, so assuming that the, the pandemic, Oh, that's the other thing I want to talk about too. Okay. Uh, Delta variant. De people take that stuff seriously. Okay. Keep wearing your masks. Right. Um, be, you know, uh, I, I, won't, I won't go so far as to say social distance, but just be careful what you're doing, who you're touching, how you're touching, continue to uh, sanitize things and whatnot, because apparently the Delta variant is six times easier to catch than the last one. Yep. Get vaccinated um, if you can. Get vaccinated. Um, I really I really care about people. I want to see them all make it past this this pandemic. We're not out of the woods yet. I would love to say that we were, mm -hmm. but we're not. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm going to, I was already planning on wearing my mask, even after the, you know, if, if this had been the it, and there was no Delta variant, I was going to keep my mask anyway, cause I have allergies, like really mm -hmm. bad ones. And, um, and I haven't had a serious sinus infection in over a year and a half. So, um, uh, that's another thing, you know, wear what you got to wear. Uh, braces or masks or gear or whatever uh, take care of your body okay it's the only one you got um, no game is worth your health so that's what I tell people all the time just uh, a lot of people want to go out there and hurt themselves and that's not a good idea yeah. so, so I know a lot of people uh, complained about wearing a mask because it makes their glasses fog up and then they can't fight or whatever. Um, they have like this sports version of a mask at Walmart and it has like straps that go all the way around so it stays on better for fighting. And uh -huh. then the way that it's designed is it still overlaps in the center. Uh, so uh -huh. like one piece covers your mouth and one piece covers your nose. Uh, but right. then the air can vent in the middle of the mask instead of at the top. So it doesn't oh, wow. fog your glasses up when you wear it. If you want, <laughs> you know, for fighting. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm my, the masks that I have, I made mm -hmm. and they have like a little thing that just pinches the nose and keeps it from going up your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and they're much better for glasses. Um, but there's, you know, I, I wear contact lenses when I fight cause I don't want to break my glasses. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's another thing. If you have the ability to do. Mm -hmm. um, some insurance companies will let you buy glasses one year and contact lenses the next year. And so, you know, use your insurance if you have it to the best of your ability, because you're, uh, for glasses, those prescriptions are good for two years. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then contact lenses, if you're wearing them sparingly, like I still have contact lenses from the last time I got contact lenses. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in a hurry to get more contact lenses. I, if I'm only using them for, uh, you know, every three months for fighting mm -hmm. in tournaments and stuff, then they're not being used all that much. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can wear them, my sister, she can't wear contact lenses to save her life. Yeah. Um, her prescription is just too thick. And so she, it has to be like, 
glass. She can't wear the soft lenses. Mm -hmm. She has to wear the hard ones mm -hmm. and they're not comfortable for her. Yeah. And then uh, likely because we have Ehlers-Danlos, um, uh, our eyes stay, our eyes get really dry. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to constantly wet your eyes. So I always have eye drops whenever I tournament because my eyes get super dry, yeah. even wearing my, my soft contact lenses. So yeah. um, have what you need, have a bag. Don't let them give you a hard time because you have your mm -hmm. own sports bag. Have a bag with all the things that you need. Uh, whether it be a wrap, a brace, uh, your hand brace. I, I have uh, gloves that I wear when I tournament. Mm -hmm. um, uh, make sure your weapons are in the best condition possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then don't fight sick. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. You can wait another three months. The world will end. Yeah. Um, don't fight it. Like right now, I really, really want to fight. I really want to fight mm -hmm. um i still go to the park and i watch everybody and i'm like oh oh if i could only fight um and i get tempted get tempted a lot um i do a hundred wax a night with my right hand mm -hmm. um you're really supposed to be like switching off and doing the things mm -hmm. um but i can't so you just do what you can as you can yeah um if if your back's out sit on a chair and use another chair as your pal um, you, you know, you can still practice, uh, in, you know, with whatever good facilities you have left, um, you can, there's various different things that you have to practice when you fight. And so some of it is, um, uh, some of it is just accuracy. So, um, you can do that. My husband actually taught me something really fun and that is, um, uh, if you have a paddle ball, have you guys ever used a paddle ball before? A little paddle with a little yeah. ball. That mm -hmm. just... He says, you don't actually have to use the ball if you don't want to, but I love it because, you know, it's a childhood game. But um, he says, you just you just practice wax by using the paddle ball, just the, the, the whole practice of double tapping. If you're just constantly practicing um, to get your wrist in condition mm -hmm. to do those shots that you need um that works out really well so um i i keep the ball on and i practice my double and triple trap taps with them mm -hmm. and see how many of those in a series i can get going um so that's uh, been very helpful mm -hmm. for working on my speed and accuracy um let's see um what else um i think the other thing that i do is um, what my brother taught me before I got serious, mm -hmm. and that was uh, learning how to walk and swing at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, most people feel like they have to like they walk to where they're gonna go to their opponent is, and then they stop using their feet. Mm. Um, so learn how to walk and throw a shot, mm -hmm. um, walk and clear the field, which is literally just moving the thing underneath your feet and taking people's legs out um, if you need to. Um, but, um, learning to use more than one limit one time mm -hmm. is another thing, but, uh, but yeah, take care of yourselves, people take care of yourselves. Well, <laughs> thank you for walking and talking with us tonight. It was great to have you on our <laughs> podcast guardian. Uh, I hope it was my pleasure Thanks and great job for you guys. I really, uh, I haven't, I, I really need to get caught up on what everybody else is doing mm -hmm. all around Amp Guardia. And I really like that you're reaching out and giving people an opportunity to talk and learn from each other. Yeah. Keep up the good work. That's amazing stuff. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. And thank you so much. And uh, we, we have a lot of uh, sister podcasts mm -hmm. and YouTube channels that also exist out in Amp Guard. Mm -hmm. I know Admiral and yeah. Cash mm -hmm. has the... I love her. Yes, she's yes. amazing. Um, I'm an honorary goose. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> nice. Uh, she has her academy, mm -hmm. which is um, on Twitch and YouTube. Um, Merrick the 15th has the Paragon Path on YouTube and Discord. I think he. we just used Discord to record it, but I think he puts it on YouTube. Yeah, I think it's on YouTube now. Mm -hmm. um, Kodiak has the Kingdom of Kodiak Anthguard podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's fine. Yeah, I, I usually watch his as often as I can because, you know, I used to live in Dragonspine. So yeah. 
um, I, I, I still try and keep track of my my former kingdom. So this is my third kingdom. Mm. And um, my third kingdom that I've been a resident of, I've been I, I've gone to other kingdoms. Yeah, I like to invade. That's my favorite thing to do. So just <laughs> let me know. Definitely come down to Winter's Edge. Interested. Yes. I, <laughs> so my brother lives in uh, St. Mary's, Georgia. Okay. So I have to go because I have 10 nieces and nephews that need my hugs. Yeah. So I, uh, that's a date. I'm yeah. just saying. There's a, there's a date involved. I will I will I will be down there. It will happen. Definitely. Give uh, us a shout. Be, we'll meet you down there. My father lives in Alpharetta. Mm -hmm. So, and my son used to go to Kennesaw State. Yep. Kennesaw, we have a park that meets at I think Kennesaw State. Um, I don't know he, if he it's was there a couple of times. The Marietta I, I really. Springs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where um who I'm belted to Pi used to be at that park. No, no, I love the pie. <laughs> I and I have been friends now um, nine years, maybe, I think. Yeah. yeah so um, he, he uh, tie-dye used to go to a college in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I lived. Mm -hmm. And then they flew in uh, when they were still a principality. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the that was the event that they became a kingdom. And they flew in and they stayed at my place. And that's where I met Pi. And then we all drove up. We gave them a ride up to Clan. Mm -hmm. And I've been a huge I've been a huge fan of the Pi guy since like forever. Um, I think he's a totally solid human. And I uh I, I can't say enough awesome things about him. Hint hint, hint hint people. <laughs> um so uh yeah, I I like him. I think he's he's brilliant. And he keeps our internets, our amp guard internets going. He does. Um, that's like some serious stuff there. I'm just saying. He's like but yeah. brilliant. Well, awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I think, do we have an outro? Uh, we'll just put it in. We'll put in the outro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, outro time. Cool. <laughs> All fantastic. right. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording. You're now. welcome. Take Yay. care. Have a great night. Yeah. You too. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on YouTube or Spotify to get notified about new episodes. And make sure to follow us on Facebook for announcements and more.